everyone, this is VJ Z3D back again with another edition of what's on deck, your weekly look at what's going on in the world of playing cards, and I do mean again, because I just recorded this damn video on Windows, because I finally got the microphone working over there, and it gave me an emphatic F you, <laughs> didn't work, I recorded the video, and I somehow it corrupted or something, it didn't save, and screwed me over and so I had to come over to Linux and we record it. Today we got some stuff to talk about, some Kickstarter projects that I'm less than excited about and a couple others that aren't too bad and also a few new bicycle branded decks that I'm looking forward to and more. Let's start off with Kickstarter. Bicycle airplane cards from collectible point cards is 74% funded, 12 days to go. I think it's just a matter of time before it funds. Enter free playing cards by Ginter Valentino Verga. 36% funded, 17 days to go. Not looking too likely at this rate. Not even halfway there. Um, then we got Visa playing cards by Patrick Crude and Alex Pandrea via House of Playing Cards. 84% funded, 27 days to go. Looks like it's just a matter of time. This is one of those that I'm not a fan of because of multiple reasons. Number one, they want me to pay $15 to ship one deck. Ain't gonna happen, especially when it costs me like 8 bucks, if not less, to ship a deck via his website. Why is he charging me like double on Kickstarter? And why is he lumping Canadian shipping and international shipping when it's completely different? It's a different rate for shipping to Canada versus China. So why is it the same rate? Another thing that's gonna turn off backwards from the, the States is $5 shipping when 99% of projects on Kickstarter have $0 for shipping in the US. Now there is a red deck, a blue deck that's a standard one, 10 bucks each. There's a limited edition red deck. I don't know how many are being produced. I'm guessing like a thousand. These are being produced by USB-C, at least the blue one. Um, the red one, I'm not sure. I'm guessing, but I'm not sure. And the red one is only available with a stinking DVD that nobody wants for $35. You don't believe me? They got 250 of these DVDs plus red decks available. Only 207 are still available. That means less than 50 people have pledged for a DVD. Nobody wants this stinking DVD and they want to force you to get the DVD in order to get the red deck. I don't fucking think so. And I am pissed off about it, and I apologize for my language. Then there's the private reserve, which is getting overdone nowadays. Too many private reserves out there that really aren't private reserves. They're just a cash grab. 25 bucks for a white deck, private reserve. I don't think so. For me to get all three decks, like a DVD I have no use for and don't want, it would cost me 90 bucks because it costs 20 bucks to ship three decks or more. And it's getting ridiculous. 15 bucks for free decks maybe isn't too bad. 20 bucks is not good. Um, and these, I don't know, it's just, it's not good. It's gonna fund, obviously. At this rate, it looks like there's gonna be a lot of decks available on their website afterwards. So I'd rather just get it there. The other thing I have to wonder is why anyone, including Patrick Kuhn, would get involved with Alex Pandrea. I mean, the guy, if you watch the video, you'll see he actually cuts off Patrick Kuhn all the time in the video. It's like, shut up, let the other guy speak. It's not just your project. And not to mention the fact that he's burned so many bridges with so many partners. I don't know why anyone would get involved with him. I don't know why anyone would trust him. Let's not forget, he's got a terrible record with shipping via his website. He still has not shipped the decks from Black Friday. And it's not acceptable. I, I just can't support him anymore. And I'm done with the bluecrown.com. I'll just get the products elsewhere, if anything. But I mean, I mean, it's not even that great. All we're seeing is a, a half decent back design. Uh, Ace of Spades it isn't bad. By the way, it's not a legal issue. Visa, as in travel visa, not the credit card. And that's it. We're not seeing any faces. Oh, right, there they are. They're just standard faces, so it's basically like 
a special NOC deck. That's all I'm seeing, really, is a special NOC deck. It's not worth it, in my opinion. The Joker is stupid lame. It's just a V. Uh, how lazy can you get, really? And you'll see me complain about another deck, about lack of customization, uh, going all the way up to court cards. In this case, I mean, if you're going to customize a Joker, then customize it. Don't just make a fucking V. It's ridiculous. Um, this is just not even worth it. Just forget about it. Let's move on. Carnival de Muertas from Roman Cote, which I think I mentioned before, funded 15 days to go. This is the other one. Three Little Pigs from Derek McGee, Pure Imagination Projects. 21% funded, 26 days to go. I do not see it happening at this rate. Um, they just barely scratched the surface funding-wise. They still have 26 days to go, but I really, I mean... They need to get a lot more funding than that, and they're not. Oh, look at that. One of the guys who's actually running the project has backed it. Isn't that a little weird? Um, for one, this is kind of like the last story I would think of designing a deck. Previously, they did Sleepy Hollow. That's fine. That kind of makes sense. With Three Little Pigs for a deck of cards. There's so many other things that I mean could fit better, I would think. Um, the Ace of Spades has the big bad wolf, and actually it says uh, his quote on there, I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow you down, blow your house down. Um, it's fine. The back design's not bad. Nice green color. It actually says on there some stuff. Pure Imagination Projects and the Free Little Pigs. Kind of unnecessary. And um, the other aces, they got the Free Little Pigs on there. Very nice aces. I'll give them that much. The number cards are pretty nice as well. And the court cards aren't half bad, but they are repeating. And I've said this before, I'll say it again. If you're going to customize a court card, customize all of them. Don't just customize one jack, one queen, one king. I don't care if you're Pure Imagination Products, if you're Dan and Dave, if you're someone else. It's lazy and lackluster. If you're going to customize something, go the whole way. Especially if it's something on Kickstarter where you're asking people to support it and we're not, obviously, for some reason, then, um, you know, people expect more from Kickstarter. When you're looking at projects, whether it's Jackson Robinson, Jody Eklund, Robert Butterfield, Usai, and so forth, they customize everything and anything. The tuck cases, pips, Court cards, 150% custom. You have to be, if you're going to do custom court cards and do a nice custom like, like this one, you need to go the whole way or none. Don't bother at all. And there, somebody was mentioning on the forum how it costs, you know, a whole lot of money to do 12 custom court cards. The designer is charged you by the card or whatever. Well, if that's the case, if it's a financial thing, then why bother customizing it all. Save yourself some money. Don't do anything. It would have been fine as is, I think, if they just let them fairly standard. Or, better yet, if you're a project creator and you're not an artist, you know, don't get into these fancy projects. Just do a fairly standard deck. Or don't do anything. This is why I prefer projects from people like Jackson Robinson or Jody Eklund because very the artist it's not, they're not paying someone to do the artwork. And they're not going to half-ass a deck, like what this is, more or less. And the Joker, really, that's it? That's kind of lackluster. I mean, you could do a little bit better than that, I think. That's just throwing something on the Joker just for the hell of it, without a whole lot of thought or effort, I think. The tuck case in this picture, not too good. And this one looks very nice. I like that. Just not a huge fan of the court cards, and I don't think it's going to fund at this rate. Moving on, Leonard Green, Master of Chaos Point Cards from Takumi Takahashi. Uh, people do not seem to be too interested in it. It's only 29% funded, 15 days to go. Whether it's the weird currency, whether it's the 
barely modified court cards, whether it's the back design that has too much stuff thrown on it, I don't know what it is, but people aren't buying it. Next, we have Akutas, playing cards for a new age by KL and L, and L whoever that is. 15% funded, 20 days to go. Excuse me. Uh, the back design, you know, isn't too bad. It's got a bunch of swords on there. It's got a sword theme. Um, two high school students. Oh, God. That sets a turn off right there. High school students running a Kickstarter project with no experience in running a Kickstarter project. Okay. Goodbye. <laughs> um, the artwork is okay. It's got it's supposed to be a semi minimalist thing and also modern. Why is every everyone that tries to do something modern tries to do it minimalist? How is that modern? <laughs> um, I think that's the Joker with a sword on it. There you see one of the court cards. I think it needs color. It needs a little more sophistication. It's just some lines, you know. It's just it's n not horrible or anything, but it's not great. In my opinion, sleek custom back design, um, made by USB-C. I don't like this because you can't see anything. It's just too fast. You can't really see the art or appreciate it. There's blank cards apparently. Um, you know, it it's okay. It just does not like when you're looking at this artwork, this image. It does not you know, stand out compared to other creators. It just doesn't really appeal to me. So fulfillment will be done, oh, most likely by Art of Play. They don't even know who is doing fulfillment. Um, they got early birds for seven days. I like that. Too many projects on Kickstarter. They give you, you know, five, 10, you know, 20 early birds. And then if you, don't know the time the project starts or you forget and you're late to the party, shall we say, you miss out on the early birds. And I don't think that's fair. Everyone should have a chance to get an early bird prize thing, not just whoever has nothing better to do with the time than sit on a computer. <laughs> um, but 10 bucks each Canadian, you know, that's not a bad price. That's even less than that US. It's like eight, seven or eight bucks US. Um, but I just, I'm not really feeling this one, artwork-wise. Let's move on. Magnificent Luxury Point Cards by Jeff Homebrand Games. 36% funded, 4 days to go. Not gonna happen. I think people are getting tired of them pushing metal decks so much. They've done, they've tried so many metal deck projects that it's just, it's getting ridiculous. And the, the other decks you see there in the picture, the, the actual regular playing cards, they're okay, but, you know, they, they're not great. Yeah. El Dorado Maya Edition playing cards relaunched from Emmanuel Valtiera. Funded, five days to go. Two different decks available. That looks pretty nice. A Day at the Races Horse Race playing card deck by Kevin Finn. 12% funded, 23 hours to go. Yeah, not gonna happen. Sorry. Bicycle Earth World playing card by Rob Balder. Funded, 19 days to go. Three different colors available there. Not bad. Have you heard of them before until now? Despite the fact that it's their 10 year celebration. But, we'll, we'll go with that. Flush Fatal. 44% funded, 6 hours to go. That's not going to happen. Unless they get some last minute miracle. Which is unfortunate because they got $15,000 in funding. But they decided to make it a $30,000 goal. Or even more than that actually. That's not going to happen. Not in 6 hours. Harambe playing cards by Brad Blitz. Looks like it's a failure waiting to happen. 8% funded. 28 days to go. They're only looking for 600 bucks. However, the only image they have on the whole project has been removed by Kickstarter due to a DMCA violation. So good luck with producing that deck when you can't even show it to people. Letdowns and disappointments. This project is included in there. Let's move on. <laughs> Cardology by Timothy Daffenrod, 17% funded, 5 days to go, not looking good at this rate. Then we got Heroes of the Nations by Timothy Krimmer, 16% funded, 36 days to go. This one is not bad. 
It's starting off with this one dark edition, or edition dark as they call it. <clears throat> it's got a fantasy theme, fantasy genre. <clears throat> to be produced by USB-C. They have a stretch goal for a light edition, as you see right there. The dark edition is basically a weathered edition, and the light edition is just kind of a, a white edition. Heroes of the Nations. Pretty nice artwork. Um, I think, you know, it's... I, I'm interested. I'm definitely... I backed it for one deck. 11 bucks plus $7 shipping. Why not? That's a pretty good deal, I think. The artwork is pretty good. If they hit the stretch goal for a second deck, you know, I'll, I'll get that as well. But $15,000, I'm not sure they're going to hit $15,000 for the light edition. Reminds me a little bit, art requires of the Middle Kingdom decks. Just a little bit. But I mean, that's not bad. They also have stretch goals for, I guess, silver and a gold. Gold, dark, silver, light. I'm thinking those are just tuck swaps, and I don't think they're going to hit that much of money. But you never know. It's still early. It just launched sometime in the last day or two, I think. Um, let's move on. Um, oh, they previously did one project. There was a romance deck, which did not make it. Then we got Lolita Fasten playing cards by Fying Fan. I think that's how you pronounce it. 0% funded, 23 days to go. <clears throat> um, uh, the back design is not good. Um, it's just some art, some cartoon, you know, girl and bear. The ace has got some fasten elements to them. Wow, one backer, one dollar. <laughs> it's gonna fun real fast. They don't have any images except a prototype galley, which this is not even a real prototype. It's just a freaking image. Uh, prototype actually means an actual functioning deck. This just is not a prototype, it's just an image. The, the court cards, they're not good. They're, they're lacking in my opinion. It's just clothes and purses. Um, why not have actual people with that? I don't know. And then the number of cards are just fairly straightforward. This one, I don't even know who's producing it. Um, I really don't care. <laughs> Um, let's just move on. I think that was it for Kickstarter. Uh, uh, excuse me. But there is one more I want to mention very quickly. Um, if I can find it. Here it is. From Barclay Mountain, Robert Tomlinson, he had a deck, a President Trump deck. Eh, really? Um, this was one I was definitely not going to back. I only had a $2,000 goal. It's been canceled because of apparent legal issues, which somehow doesn't surprise me. Um, you know what? It's one thing to support somebody, whether it's Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton or whoever. I could care less. But to throw it in somebody's face like this... I don't like it. That's, you know, this type of stuff is what turns people off of people like Donald Trump is when you're throwing it in people's faces. You want to support someone, that's fine, but don't throw it in people's faces. Don't push it out there. Um, so it's just a bunch of artwork. This to me is not that great. It's not a good deck at all. I mean, <clears throat> Robert Tomlinson has done a lot of good classy decks whether it's American history, which he's got more coming up, or, you know, the Titanic decks, or whatever. And he's put a lot of effort into it. He's designed the artwork and stuff. And this one is just a bunch of pictures with people on them and words. And it looks like one of those projects that's doomed to fail. And the back design is fine. It's just got the United States presidential seal, which I'm not even sure if that's legally allowed to be used, but I guess it's public domain. Um, I don't like it. It's not, I really don't like it. The legal issue was something to do with the Smithsonian. Apparently he was going to sell them to the Smithsonian, but they said, we need some legal stuff to go with that. <laughs> so he had to cancel. He hopes to get them back on online in the future. 
they need a licensing agreement. I don't know even sure if Donald Trump is going to bother with that. <laughs> but um, let's move on to Indiegogo. Indiegogo. No go. That project for me is a no go. I don't like Donald Trump. And I don't like that artwork. There's no artwork on there. It's just images. It's lazy to some extent. No offense to Robert. I like his work. I like his other decks. This might be better if he actually you know, did more than just put pictures on it. Uh, I will support his other projects. I just won't support that one. Alright, Strain Wars, playing cards. 0% funded, 16 days to go, doing so well. It's not going to fund. Uh -uh. Nah. Um... And then the main one I wanted to talk about here, oh, Mate Social Playing Cards, 2% funded, 7 days to go, not doing good either. I guess the last thing people want to do when they go out on a date is pull out cards to try and start a conversation. Alright, Butterfly Playing Cards, which is coming to an end, I think it's got like 62, 63 hours left, 3 days left. It's funded, it's hit the stretch goal, the red deck is now available, so if you want to check that out I obviously you want to make sure to get in there before it ends blue deck is apparently unmarked I guess the red deck is marked I what oh if they hit 350 percent funding they're gonna produce an unmarked deck as well with no markings why would you want that just get the marked deck we're almost there. It looks like they're going to hit that. I'm not going to get a deck that, that's just different because it has no markings. I'll just stick with what I got. One red one and one blue one. There's markings. There's all sorts of stuff. Not even any images. These are being produced by Carter Moon there, which might turn some people off. Except the fact that they're actually using a, a new stock in Finis now. It's actually on par with the USB-C, so I'm looking forward to checking that out. And hopefully it's going to be good. We may have a fourth player in the, a fourth major player in the world of custom playing cards, not, not to mention Noir Arts and MPC. So let's move on. A couple more things to mention. Let's go to United Cardists. <clears throat> I'm going to lose my voice. <clears throat> um, if I didn't mention already, I don't remember if I did. <laughs> I mean, I, I know I've mentioned this one before. Vitreous playing cards from rehandcrafted.com. Very nice. I just got them the other day. Good quality stock and finish from expert playing cards, not the standard NOC stuff you get. I like it. Uh, you can get it on his website, rehandcrafted.com. Um, Viceroy is apparently coming soon. Not sure who this person is. It's kind of interesting. I'd like it if you can actually see the pips a little bit better. They're just kind of lost in the artwork. Not sure how I feel about it. <clears throat> uh, Gatorbacks. A distant Dore from David Blaine. He's released a new set that comes with a signed deck. You see the image right here and a mystery rare deck, which apparently, looking at the what you see, is this one, and it's gotta be that one. It better be that one, or there's gonna be a lot of extremely pissed off people. I look forward to checking this out when I get it. If anyone wants to buy a signed deck for like 50 bucks, let me know, we'll make a deal. <laughs> um, so that's nice, that's kinda cool, came out of nowhere. Illusionist has released their Legacy Edition, Black Legacy Edition set. When did that happen? 
I guess that was last week. I might have mentioned it already. It probably did. You get all three decks, black, uh, you know, Saturn Masters and black ghost and a black tiger. No white ghost for some reason. A little bit pricey, but it is what it is. And then, we'll get to this in a minute. <clears throat> I want to mention this one. DMC Drummond Money Coots has a new deck on his website, SovereignPlayingCards.com. It is the DMC Elites in Ruse. It's available for pre-order right now. Produced by Carter Munde. I'm hoping it's the new stock in Phoenix. Look at that texture on that playing card. Looks pretty cool. It is a marked deck. I did not get the last Elite deck because... Uh, it's an issue with checking out on the website for me. Um, plus, it's basically the same as a previous deck I got, just a different tuck case. So, eh, I said, you know, well, we'll move on. <laughs> I won't worry too much about it. I wouldn't mind checking out this one. I don't know where this is available, or if it is, but kind of interesting. Let's get on to these bicycle ones. These are all from DeFata Magic. Uh, of course, uh, Vincenzo DeFata is from... Italy is kind of like uh, the Italian version of Murphy's Magic. He's got new foilbacks in gold and emerald. Gold, of course, has previously been available through USB-C for different tuck case, the Metal Lux decks. And the emerald was available to club members in a special collector set, which I did get, but <clears throat> it's the first actual uh, release of a official green Metal Lux deck to anyone who wanted. <coughs> available at spillcartonsop.com and from Germany and I guess solomagia.it you can see these videos as well if you want also coming soon bicycle Paris backs in blue and red it's kind of like a new version of rider backs or maiden backs or mandolin backs except with Eiffel Towers on there they're not bad I like it reviews coming soon sometime next year probably Bicycle fruit deck, which has got fruits on it. I like that it's different colored, four different colored suits. That's pretty cool. Uh, looks pretty interesting. I don't know what the back design is going to look like. I'm guessing it's fruity and mirror image, hopefully. And then we get this a black rainbow back, um, which, of course, is the multicolored back design. It's a one way back design, but it's nice for fanning and forcing. It's got black borders and faces. We haven't seen these in quite some time. Um, so yeah, that's that. Apparently Gamblers is getting them soon. And I imagine Collectible Point Cards is as well. Um, one more quick thing. Oh, well, look at Collectible Point Cards, actually. Don't forget, CollectiblePointCards.com. Use the code VGLZ30 to save 10% on your order. Let's see what's new. They got the Bicycle Astronomy, which I'm still waiting for. Bicycle Americana in blue. Murphy's Magic Signature NLC. Magic notebooks in six different colors that were not necessary and what appears to be a reprint of the bicycle tattoo deck which I will be getting sometime in the not too distant future which basically looks like the second edition that I never got maybe some minor changes so I'm definitely going to check it out <clears throat> and I do like these cards with different colored suits so I'm down for it so that is that for today for what's on deck of course lots of videos coming to my channel lots of reviews coming up so stay tuned for that i'll see you next time thanks for watching Don't forget to let me know what you think comment read, subscribe thumbs up see ya sorry if it's a bit long i had some ranting to do let's move on see ya <laughs>